Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my worst financial mistakes. Now everybody makes mistakes and I just want to tell you guys about some of the mistakes that I've made in my past. Now some of these are not life mistakes, but they are definitely financial mistakes. So please don't judge me and let's get into the video. So let's talk about the first mistake and this one has to do with real estate. If you're looking into becoming a real estate investor or buying rental properties, you will likely have moments like this where you look back and wish you had followed through or at least done more to secure that deal. In my situation, the housing market was at an all time low and short sales were still very rampant. I remember looking at many homes and had my eyes on two homes specifically that were in the same block in a really nice neighborhood. Now I recently had bought a home back in 2009 and this was two years later in 2011 and all the homes seemed to have still plummeted about 10%. Now when I was looking at these listings, I was wondering how the heck could these homes be so cheap in such a nice neighborhood with such nice schools, considering I just paid 10% less in a much less desirable neighborhood. So I sent that listing to my wife and we got a realtor and we started hunting again. Now the mistake here is the fact that we were not persistent enough in our hunt. We scheduled a couple viewings and we actually saw about six homes or so. Now these homes were missing things like appliances and blinds and whatever the homeowners could take and run off with before the bank took the home back. But the one that we really wanted was a short sale and the homeowners weren't allowing us to see the house. Now we were able to see a lot of photos and it looked really good and the neighborhood was really great. It's actually only like a mile away from my current house and we know the schools in this area are all great. They're all nines and tens and we knew that these homes were undervalued. Now me and my wife were trying to see this home and we made appointments with a realtor but the homeowners just refused to let us in. They literally yelled at our real estate agent and told us to go away. And eventually we basically just gave up looking because we were so frustrated with all these experiences and not being able to see any of the homes. Now what we should have did was just put in a blind offer because we had pictures, we knew the neighborhood was great. And literally just two years ago, we could not afford homes in this area. So we knew these homes were worth well over $300,000. Now I was pretty young and pretty dumb at the time. I was only 26 and I didn't really know much. I didn't know about market crashes or real estate crash of 2008. Back then everybody was just panicking and losing their homes and all the homes were basically on sale for anybody willing to grab them. And the sad thing was I had the buying power to grab one of these homes and I did not follow through. And now that I look at the Zillow history, I saw that the home sold for $240,000. So just $20,000 more than the asking price for the short sale. And that was easily attainable by us. And of course I had to look at the Z estimate and the property today is probably worth over $450,000. So that's 2X my money that I could have had and also a real estate rental in a really nice neighborhood. Now we still cry about this from time to time and sometimes we actually drive by that home to just remind us like that could have been ours and we weren't persistent enough to actually go and grab it. All right, let's talk about number two and that has to do with the current house that I live in right now. So obviously I did not get that house from earlier and so fast forward three years to 2014 where we purchased this current house that we live in. Now this home, there was nothing wrong with it. It was actually a really nice build and it had granite countertops and really the only thing wrong with it was the fact that it had dated cabinets and it needed all new carpet in every single room. Now the mistake here has to do with literally ripping out a perfectly working kitchen and putting everything brand new for $30,000. Now this was mainly my wife's doing, but I'll partially take blame for allowing it because I did go a little overboard in the appliance category. We also settled for this home after looking at many other homes that were much better than this one. And we almost bought one actually for $440,000, but we actually settled for this one for $375,000. And we figured since we saved $65,000 on the purchase price, we decided we should just do $30,000 in renovation on this home. That way it'll make up for the other home that we didn't get. Well, $30,000 turned into $40,000 because that's literally how home renovations work. Now don't get me wrong, we love this home and it was not a mistake to do all of these upgrades. It was just a financial mistake. We love our kitchen, we love our floors, and to be honest, we're not gonna leave this home for a while, but was it financially wise? Well, the short answer is no. And the reason why I say this is because we actually only put 10% down and we actually saved the other 10% to do home renovations. We didn't wanna dip into our emergency funds, so we had to use some of our down payment for the renovations. What this meant was we could have put 20% down on this house 
and avoided PMI and maybe even potentially got a better interest rate on our loan. But the point here is that we had a perfectly working kitchen, it even had granite countertops and actual hardwood cabinets. We could have just bought some standard stainless steel appliances and had the cabinets redone and repainted and probably made it all work for less than $8,000. But what's done is done. Here's some before and after pictures because you're probably wondering what the heck we spent $40,000 on. All right guys, on to number three. This one is kind of forced onto my wife and I, and maybe I kind of forced it on her as well. And this has to do with our wedding. My wife and I spent $40,000 on our wedding, and maybe that was not the best decision. And this was in 2012 before we bought the other home. So you can see here, some of this money actually could have went to that down payment that I mentioned earlier. Now, the more I think about this wedding, the more I feel like my parents were actually trying to keep up with the Joneses themselves. I was the first child to get married in my family and also the eldest son. So we had to have a traditional wedding where all of our family members had a reason to assemble. In the Vietnamese culture, when there is a wedding, it's a huge party, everybody's invited pretty much. And really this is the only chance we all get to see each other. And so it was a big deal for them. We basically paid for everybody's dinner that night. There was over 300 people. There was dancing, there was a whole bunch of alcohol. And really saying no wasn't even an option in my dad's vocabulary. I had declined a couple requests that he wanted and he was pretty furious. And we actually didn't talk for a while, but eventually he was willing to compromise. At the end of the day, this wasn't his wedding. My wife actually didn't even want to have a big wedding at all. We just wanted to have close, immediate family and something really small that didn't cost too much money. Well, I'm sorry, honey. It's over now and we're $30,000 poorer because of it. And the reason why I say we're $30,000 poor is because we actually got a little bit of money back in gifts and donations. A lot of it was cash and some of it was gifts, but we're still in the hole for over $30,000. I guess the lesson here is that weddings are expensive and in zero ways is really a smart financial investment. I mean, it is a good life investment because you do want to have that day with your special person and also invite some of your family members to kind of celebrate that day, but it doesn't really make financial sense to spend that much money. So if you can avoid it and if you can have a smaller wedding, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and I highly suggest you do that because weddings can get expensive quick. And this is actually a really good way to put yourself into debt before you're actually even married. All right guys, let's talk about number four and this has to do with my real estate property. Now I know not everybody has a real estate property and if you do, then maybe you wanna take some of my advice. And this has to do with the fact that I actually paid off my investment property before paying off my primary property. Now this is actually one of those mistakes that I wish I didn't make because it actually is costing me money and it's continually costing me money every single year. If you didn't know, rental properties are huge tax write-offs and all that mortgage interest that I ended up paying off on that loan actually would have offset some of the income that I'm making on that property now. I actually knew this before paying it off, but my wife and I really wanted to own something outright. So we decided let's just go ahead and pay off that investment property so that way you own it. Now this is a mistake because that real estate property is actually a business, so we have to treat it as a separate entity. It's not actually something that we personally own like a refrigerator or a TV that we finance. So this is a big mistake that's costing us right now. And the reason why I say this is because we still have a mortgage on our current house. In this current house, we're still paying interest. And if you guys know the tax code, the interest on this house is actually not really doing us any good right now. It's actually not doing anything. And so every year we pay interest into this home, we could have paid interest into the other home and actually got a tax deduction. And so the financially smart thing to do would have been to pay off this home first because it's a primary residence and then leave the mortgage on the real estate rental property because all the mortgage interest on that property is a tax write-off or a tax deduction. I know that was a lot of information, but trust me, don't pay off your real estate property or don't pay off anything in your business, especially if it's a tax deduction or a write-off and consider paying off your primary house first. All right guys, on to number five and this one is really just a personal thing and maybe it's not cut out for everybody. But for me, this is not investing more and taking on more risk in my 20s. Now I'm in my 30s right now and sometimes I look back into my 20s and wonder why I didn't take on more risk or do more investing. 
Now, if you didn't notice from earlier, I had a lot of liquid cash in my 20s and really spent it on really dumb things like weddings and renovations and didn't put a lot of my money to work. I mean, some can argue that home renovations increase the value of your home, but let's be real here. You're not gonna get most of that money back. You're probably only gonna get half of it back. My wife and I were dinks, and if you don't know what dinks are, that's dual income, no kids. And we had a lot of cash to dish out for dumb things like weddings and renovations. Fortunately, we weren't that crazy with money and we did get an investment property going and we did get a second home, but really that's all we really did in terms of investing and taking on risk. I feel like we could have done way more. I know I had zero clues about the stock market in my 20s, so I wasn't really heavily invested in that. I also wasn't maxing out my 401k, which was a mistake as well. I kind of wish I was maxing that out the entire time because that would have been a whole lot of money right now and I don't even wanna think about it because I know it'll make me depressed. Now in my 30s, I'm definitely doing all of those things now. I'm actually taking on more risk because I'm actually becoming a little bit more educated in a lot of things. And sometimes I have to remind myself to stop being so scared of everything because the only real way to grow your wealth is by investing and taking on risk. I made another video talking about saving money and how it's really gonna get you nowhere. It's really just a stepping stone to get you to the next stage, which is investing. So now these days, we've been doing a new strategy. We've been maxing out all of our retirement accounts. We've been maxing out our HSA. You know, I talked about these five accounts in another video, but really it's all about building wealth and putting more money into investments. Now, I know not everybody has a whole bunch of money, but you have to put some money away for investing. Now, I definitely recommend you pay off your debt first before you start investing, but you have to remember, you have to invest to become wealthy. You cannot become wealthy by just saving money all day long. Trust me, I did this in my 20s and my wealth is growing much faster now than it was in my 20s. My advice is if you have extra cash each month, put at least half of it away into investments of some kind. It could be an S&P 500 fund, it could be a slush fund for buying your first real estate property, it can be literally anything as long as your money is working for you and not just sitting there doing nothing. And I'm not talking about parking it into a high yield savings account either. These days, those things don't pay anything. And so you wanna take a little bit of risk with some of your money, maybe 10 to 20% of it. And then as you get more comfortable, you can up that number to maybe 40 to 50%. But remember, you have to have an emergency fund before you do any of this. You definitely don't wanna put money into some investment and then need it later on. So if you do this early, you don't have to look back in your 20s or 30s and wish that you would have did more or invested more. You just tell yourself you've been doing it all along and that was all you can afford at the time, which is better than nothing. You also don't wanna have a huge account full of cash because you might end up saying you deserve things and start buying new furniture, appliances, or even worse, cars. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. These are just some of my worst financial mistakes that I wanted to share with you guys. I wouldn't say that these were life mistakes, otherwise my wife would divorce me, but I do regret them financially because they definitely set me back at least a couple years. I hope you guys learned something out of this video and if you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.